hey girl hey welcome back to my channel it's your girl misha thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review we are back with a brand new review for love and marriage huntsville season three episode 16 no holding back baby this episode okay i think it was so and cool i think they're acting a fool shout out to melody <laughs> Child, I gotta give it to y'all before the review even starts, honey, because this episode right here, honey, it was a fool. If you are new here, then welcome. I give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade. If you are back for a second or third time, then welcome back. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. Now, child, let's get into it if we gonna get into it. When the episode first opens up, Mel is at the office and she's talking about some dancers or something. I'm assuming it's for her music video or something. You know, she's touring all over the world and whatnot. Marceau arrives and you know he gonna show up extra early to get his hug from Mel before Tisha show up. I'm like, what you doing here all extra early? You can't be early for nothing that's got to do with Tisha. You couldn't even make your way to that therapy session that you was bamboozled into. But you can get here early. Mm-hmm. I'm watching you and you ain't fooling me. Moving forward. So they're having a meeting for the comeback group to see if they can move forward or dissolve things. How many times y'all gonna meet about this same group? It ain't coming back. Okay? I don't want to hear nothing about the comeback group. I don't want to hear nothing about Mel and Martell fussing and fighting all up and through. And I don't want to hear nothing about this 47 acres. Okay? Enough. I feel like we have been watching the same season for three seasons. Carlos King, I'm speaking directly to you, honey. We need a little bit more zhuzh. Okay, now granted, we do like to see them get into it as they get into it, but now it's becoming draining, okay? So we're going to need something else, not Tiffany, honey, because we can do without. Uh, we didn't see Destiny this episode, honey. I guess she over there playing with law and whatnot, but we're going to need something else. Okay, let's proceed. So Mel and her confessional, she was like, well, you know, I quit the comeback group years ago, and they should know that my word is my bond. Yet here you are again, so I'm not understanding. My girl, go and set yourself off. So she starts talking to Marceau about the race, which was really awesome. And she said it was such a great race and she loved it. And her and Destiny talked about it. And I totally agree. And I told y'all that if I'm ever down in Huntsville, well, actually, I'm going to make it a point to be down in Huntsville next time they have their race because I'm going to race all the way up and through to my Destiny. Moving forward. He said, you know, I thought it was positive, but I saw y'all over there with the mothers and y'all were kind of vibing. And I didn't want any parts. Uh, they definitely did not pass the vibe check. I don't know what you call vibing, but they were arguing. <laughs> like Miss Wanda said, she had questions. She looked at Miss Vanessa. Miss Vanessa told Tisha, unhand me, you cad. Honey, the helpers was fighting. Okay, so I don't know what you call vibing, but that's not a vibe. That's a vibe. It wasn't a vibe. Get it together, Marceau. So anywho, Mel is like, well, you know, I spoke to Miss Wanda and everything when I got there and everything was cool. But the way she walked up to my mother, I didn't appreciate that. He goes, yeah, you know, you don't do that. I mean, even if you have the proof, you really just don't talk to anyone's mom like that. Mel said, uh, okay, so I agree with Marceau, but he didn't seem to have a problem with it last year when he spread rumors about my mama. Mel, why is everybody talking about your mama, girl? Where are they getting this information? Child, I want to know. So Tisha walks in looking good in her pink. Hey, girl, come on in, honey. Your man is drooling. So everyone else starts to arrive. Martell and his little Rico Suave, the little tight shirt, child. They show up too. And he can't help but to mention Mel and his confessional. Child, Martell, I guess anything else would be uncivilized. And baby, I just want to say this. They are around each other a lot to be divorced. I don't think I could do that until I completely healed. Um, baby, they better than me. Because when I tell you I don't want to see my soon-to-be ex-husband, I don't want to see hide nor hair of him. Child, one time, I, let me tell you a little story time. It's not really a story time. I was in a local Walmart one time, honey, trying to be masked up and six feet apart per the CDC. And baby, I saw over in the abyss somebody that had a silhouette the same as my soon-to-be ex-husband. And child, my heart dropped to the floor. I almost threw up. I was like, oh my God, now we in the same Walmart, Lord. But then as I got closer, then the mirage turned into a real person and I realized it wasn't him. Oh, child, that was a close one. So I do not understand how Mel and Martell can do this, child. It is beyond me. But anywho, that's just a side note. So Kimmy starts talking about, you know, tying up loose ends with the comeback group. And Mel is like, well, you know, I officially pulled out in 2019. Here go Marceau. Well, you can pull out and still have a baby. I mean, touche. <laughs> But are you speaking from experience, honey? Okay, sound like a subliminal to me. So Mel is like, well, you know, speaking of babies, where are the kids, Martell? He said in your office. She said, what? He 
said, why are you saying it like that? She said, they in my office. So she jumps up all dramatic like, and he's like, they ain't gonna tear nothing up. She's like, well, first of all, they been here plenty of times before, but if they in my office, first of all, I'm going to speak to them. And then I'm going to make sure they keep my office in check. Girl, sit down somewhere, honey, trying to be seen. Child, I know this game. Okay, I used to play this game. Get up. You know you're looking good, honey. Sue sitting right, giving the judge that needs to be given, and you want to be seen. Girl, so you're just spinning around. Now, I understand you want to go and speak to your kids, but this right here, it just did a little much for me. Now, that may be an unpopular opinion, but it's my opinion, okay? Those kids know the rules, especially if they've been there plenty of times before. Sometimes mail works my nervous system. I'm just saying. So Kimmy is like, oh, Lord, I cannot. Kimmy, I'm with you. <laughs> I cannot eat the child. I cannot. So she goes in there and she speaks to her babies. And that little one is so freaking cute. When I tell you that little baby's so cute, every time I see that little round face of hers and she just be smiling with those little teeth. Oh, my God, honey. She is so pretty. So while Mel is saying hi to the kids, Martell is on the other side saying, you know, I'm down for whatever. I'm down for continuing because... You know, they're all still doing things in the community. So Marcel said, well, you know what? We need to figure out how to have meetings because we can't have dysfunction. Well, count Mel and Martell out then, honey, because that's the only thing you're going to have is dysfunction if the two of them get together and get to fussing. So Mel is back by now, right? So Mel said, you know, can we take a vote? He said, a vote on what? She said, on who wants to be in the comeback group? No, girl, we cannot take a vote. We know you don't want to be a part of the comeback group. Mel, if you don't want to be a part of it, then don't. Okay, don't host no meetings, don't attend no meetings, nothing. So you can move freely, girl, and you ain't got to worry about coming back to the comeback group. So Marceau said, how about we each individually, you know, if we see a project, we can say, oh, that's something that the comeback group can be a part of. Then we have a focus. So Mel said, you know, I agree, but unfortunately, I won't be able to be a part of it. Marceau said, what are you doing? What's going on? I feel like we're having a meeting, but you and Martell are having a side meeting. Mel said, okay, well, let me tell y'all about the sneaky snake stuff. And Martell was like, sneaky snake stuff? What are you saying? Why are you saying that? She's like, well, y'all had a group meeting, Martell and Marceau. Y'all had a meeting with Chris and his messy behind, because y'all know how I feel about Chris. I feel like he is a go-in-between mess maker. Martell said, it wasn't no jabs or jokes being thrown at you. Because Mel was like, and y'all were throwing little jabs and little jokes. This time, I got to side with my old oh, child. Hell is freezing over. I got to side with Martell. They didn't throw any jabs or jokes at Mel. And I hate it, but they actually proposed working with Mel. Like, Chris just messy, and I told y'all that. I'm like, wait a minute, I don't remember the jabs and the jokes. I remember Marceau asking Martel if he would be willing to work with Mel. And he said, yeah, because you know he got the, she got the builder's license. So, of course, he's going to be willing to work with her. Child, let's not get crazy. So, she's like, don't lie for him, Marceau. Marceau said, were you there? She said, no, but I talked to the person that was there. And he lied to you, sis. He lied. They did not say anything negative about you. Now, what you and Martel discussed when y'all got face to face, you know how y'all like to rip each other apart. Now, that's something totally different. But in that meeting, they were not throwing jabs at you. Martell is thrown off because they've been doing good. He's like, we've been doing real good. Something must have happened. She goes, I will tell you if you shut your mouth, I can let you know. Oh, okay, meeting over. Honey, I would have packed up my little bond. <laughs> Child, I cannot stand a bunch of chaos and strife. Do y'all hear me? Everywhere these two are, it breeds chaos. I would not be able to coexist. He's like, you ain't finna disrespect me. She said, if you will shut your mouth, I will tell you, just let me talk. So Marcel said, you know, clearly they're picking up with whatever conversation they were having previously. Cause I mean, I don't know what's happening right now. She said, you know, I don't want to do anything regarding Martel. He said, well, you didn't want to a few years ago either. You didn't want to be a part of the comeback group. She said, well, that's because there was beef between us all. He said, and it all stemmed from you. Uh, he ain't lying though. I'm just saying, honey, Mel was the, was the cause of the strife. Everybody else was on one accord, and Mel was fussing with Tisha. Mel was fussing with Marceau. Mel was fussing with Martel. Mel was fussing with Kimmy. Then, huh, Kimmy got back on the same page. Then it was Kimmy and Mel versus Tisha, and Tisha and Miss Wanda versus Mel, and Mel versus Tisha. Charlie was a fool, okay? Going on back to season one. Y'all see what I'm talking about? Moving forward. So these two continue to get into it as they get into it. They going back and forth. And she said, what I would like to do is the same thing I've been doing since 2009. Child, this man got up and he said, What's that? Neglect the kids? Now, Martell, is it dog food? 
<laughs> is it dog food that you eat? Is it like, what is it? Puppy child? Like, are you on prescription medication? Like, why would you just jump up? Your kids are within earshot and say that their mother neglects them. Okay. They're all like, Martel, Martel, that was a low blow. Don't say that, Martel. Okay, granted that was a low blow. But listen, Mel started this. Stop poking the bear. Talk about what the meeting is about. We are here to talk about the comeback group. Stop with this incessant arguing, okay? I'm tired of watching the same arguing every episode. I'm sick of it. Now, I'm still going to review it, but I am sick of it. <laughs> like, this don't make no sense. And Martel, how you going to come out of your mouth? You have the unmitigated gall, the gumption, the audacity to come out of your mouth and say that she was neglecting the children, the same children that she was left with while you roamed the streets at night with your side chick. Oh, okay, honey, make it make sense. Boy, if you don't shut up. So then they start talking about custody of the kids and Martel gets up and walks out, okay, as he should. So Mel starts asking, why do y'all wanna do business with Martel? Why do they wanna do business with either of you? Okay, you're two sides of the same coin. She's like, you know, I will never get back with him because of all of his morals and the integrity of the man that he's shown himself to be. Okay, how do we get to you two getting back together? <laughs> I was so confused. I said, not you don't wanna get back together because of the integrity and whatnot. Like, what are we talking about? She's like, why y'all wanna work with him? Maurice said, you know, we all had a good working relationship. So then Marceau said, well, it doesn't take me long to learn a lesson. And she was like, yeah, facts. But what Marceau was actually saying is, it didn't take me long to realize that I don't want to work with either of you. That's what he's actually saying. And she's like, that's what I'm saying. No, Mel, no. Because you can't understand what Marceau is saying because you should have learned by now that Martel feeds off of seeing you riled up. It's one of those, I'll take any type of attention even if it's negative type thing. Like, stop it. Stop giving him life. So clearly it does take you a long time to learn a lesson and that is okay. Honey, I mean, when you've had four children from someone and you've been with them for 14 years, I understand. Nobody can give you a time limit on when to get over it. Okay, because people try to tell me all the time, well, girl, you might just, hey, please don't give me no time limit, honey. I will get over it in due time. Okay, if you haven't lived it, I don't want to hear nothing about it. But at the same time, you haven't learned the lesson yet. Moving forward, Marcel said, Martel is a good businessman but he still gets into it with Mel and it's not going to go over well for him. And that's what he was saying in his confessional. I hear you, okay? But at this point, it's both parties that are involved, okay? I think he made the right choice leaving and not arguing where the kids could potentially run out because they were getting loud and then they started talking about custody. And I'm like, what are y'all talking about? Like, why are y'all speaking about this loudly and in this way? Like, I don't like the man that he is, but Mel has to take responsibility for these interactions as well. Because it's not just Martel, it's Mel and Martel. It's Eminem, peanut Eminem, child, not the plane. Because they are nuts. Do y'all hear me? Child, you know it's bad when Marceau starts making sense. So Maurice said, well, y'all were everything to each other. Y'all were intertwined at one point. She said, well, why am I okay? But are you okay though, sis? Because if not, that's okay. Okay, we women, we're resilient. We pick ourselves up by our bootstraps we persevere we do all that okay we birth the babies we we go get the bacon bring it home fried up in a pan we do all that but queen you're not all the way okay because if you were he would not be able to aggravate your spirit he wouldn't be able to say anything to you child the mere sight of him you would be like mm -hmm. okay child martel here again okay thanks for coming honey it would give you nothing marceau said you're good because you're winning and if you were losing, it would be a different story. So just then, Martel calls. He's like, uh, can you speak to Mariah? Because she crying real bad. Uh, not the mama that likes to neglect them since 2019. Like, what? <laughs> not she crying real bad, can you speak to Mariah? But um, she's the mother that likes to neglect them. Martel just be saying stuff for shock value. Child, just shut up, okay? When are y'all gonna cut it out? Okay, the babies are hurting now. Like, it's not even funny anymore. It's not cute. I can't even sing my uncool song right now because the baby is hurting. And that really broke my heart. That really did break my heart because she was boo-hoo crying. And y'all get them cameras out of her face. Like, everything doesn't need to be recorded. She's upset. So here go Martel. You know, um, Mariah was telling me 
that she was upset because she remembers the office being both of ours. No, Martell, you remember the office being both of yours. You couldn't even get in there good before doing a confessional about it. This little girl has been to this office several times without you. So she knows that the office was both of yours. She's upset because she heard you call her mama trifling on the slick. She heard the two of you with your raised voices because she pays attention when the younger kids are not. And she heard y'all arguing about custody. That's why she's crying. Like, come on. Moving forward. So everybody else gets up and goes, honey, because now Mel has to go and speak with Mariah. So they go outside and they're talking to Martel and Martel is taking it in somewhat, I guess. And Marceau tells him that he has to stop this for the sake of the kids. Like, come on, dude, y'all got to stop. So he gets a little choked up and Mel is like, you know, we both love the kids. They may need to get some family counseling. Maybe instead of the co-parenting counseling, they need to counsel as a family because the kids have emotions that they have suppressed and they need an outlet too. And y'all sitting them in front of this camera. So what do you feel? I feel like I want to cry because I want y'all back together. No, that's not it. That's not it. We don't even need to be privy to that. Okay. Don't sit them in front of us and have them sing and dance. We don't need that. What they need to do is go to a licensed family therapist that specializes in talking to kids and they need to be able to get this out. This is the thing. Kids tend to want to please their parents. So they smile and then, you know, they make it like everything's okay. As much as we don't want to see them upset, they don't want to see us upset either. And I know this from personal experience. I have a small child that has told me, well, mommy, I don't want to see you get upset. Will you be upset if I call my daddy? And when he said that, I said, listen to me, I don't care if you call your daddy all day long. I probably would like it, honey, because I'm petty like that. Okay, pretty and petty. <laughs> you can call your daddy all day long, honey. Mommy is not going to be upset with you in the slightest for wanting to have a relationship with your father. That's not how this works. And you know, I had to really just explain it to him because he felt like I don't want to betray mommy. And I could tell that these kids feel the exact same way. They're torn in between the two. Cause they really want to be with you. Shout out to Latoya Luckett. Honey, they're torn in between the two. They don't know what to do. Okay. And if that wasn't embarrassing enough to make y'all act like y'all got some sense, then I don't know what to tell y'all. Okay. Get these kids some therapy. Cause honey, I sure got mine with some therapy, honey. Talking to whoever he needs to talk to, to make sure he's okay. In the next scene, Eminem go to play tennis and they start discussing how Mel and Martell act like they don't have no home training and they don't. He said, you know, as long as they keep this up, I will never work with them because that was a train wreck. Marceau, I have to agree. He said, you know, I feel like it would be irresponsible of me because my family eats off of my decisions. Now that's facts. So Maurice tells Marceau about the counseling session and he said, you know, the therapist was really good and he is. He said, um, you know, he helped me see some life changing things. So Marceau said, like what? Maurice told him how Dr. Francis equated entrepreneurship to him having two wives so after the conversation he found that he was the one creating his own stress and I hope Maurice and Martel continue the counseling separately because they both are dealing with separate issues and I did like the fact that they at least took the first step which is more than I can say for Marceau child. so all of a sudden in the confessional Marceau is saying he sees the light at the end of the tunnel. He's like, I have due dates, I have deadlines, and you know, I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, but when I don't feel like I see the light, then I'm going to seek professional counsel. Well, honey, that's quite different from you being depressed, okay? So then he tells Maurice, you know, I expected y'all to overreact. Maurice said, uh, you can't say depression, and then there's an overreaction, not with people that love you. Marceau talks out of both sides of his behind. He doesn't feel depressed. Okay, I'm just calling it right now. He does not feel depressed, but he let it slip out and he expected it to be one of the things that stayed in Vegas. That doesn't have anything to do with what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. If you tell somebody you're depressed, they're going to think that you're depressed. That word carries a lot of weight and a lot of people truly experience depression. Marcel should be ashamed of himself for being so irresponsible with his words. Because let me tell you something, there are people that watch this show for an escape. There are people that watch this and they hear you saying, oh, I, I know you guys were gonna overreact because I said I was depressed. That's irresponsible. That should have been edited out, quite frankly. Because it's, it's very triggering. There are some people who have to pull themselves up out of darkness. So, like, you just talking? Boy, shut up. Moving forward. The ladies get together at Scott and Perium for a little girl chat. And all of them come. It's Tisha, Mel, and Kimmy. Just like the good old days. 
So Tisha asked Mel, she was like, well, what was the other day about? Like, what was happening? She said, you know, same as always, Martell taking jabs, and then I respond. But Mel, he came in on silence, sis. He didn't say nothing. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I really, I have to call it like I see it. Martell didn't come in that office and say one word. He didn't say anything. She's like, you know, he said something inappropriate to me. It's my week. I got him. Mel, no, he did not. No, he didn't, honey. He didn't say that. What he said was, they not going to tear nothing up. And he kind of said it kind of like chuckling a little bit. But then you got up and twirled around and went in there to speak to your kids, as you should. Because, I mean, what mama going to know that their kids are in the next room and not going to get up and speak to them? So I understood that part. But now you just, girl, it's a reach. She's like, I really wish he would quit trying to pray and wish that I was a bad mom. Now, that part right there, that's pathetic, okay? For you to say on TV countless times that I'm a bad mom, I neglect the children, I'm always leaving them with babysitters, for him to keep repeating that over and over, that ain't right. Kimmy gonna say, so he has the kids uh, since we left the meeting? She said, yeah. <laughs> Baby, Kimmy is over it. Do y'all hear me? So then she asked about Mariah. And Mel said, you know, maybe she was feeling Martell's energy because he was upset. Now, kids will pick up on your energy. They pick up on your energy, your facial expressions. They pick up on all that. Okay, even when you think they're not paying attention, they are. So Mel said, Martell should have brought them in there to say goodbye to me. And then, you know, it would have been a little better. I do agree. He should have brought them in there and said, say bye to your mom. Or at least said, Mel, come say bye to the kids. We're about to go. Something. So Kimmy asked, you know, well, how can we be of service? Like, how can we help y'all to navigate through this? And Mel said, don't have us in the same room. Now this, you're on point with. Shout out to Phaedra Parks. Here go, Kimmy. Are you serious? Are you serious? Girl, why would she want to be in the same room with Martell when she clearly sees that they cannot get along? So Kimmy said, okay, at this point, do you just not want us to invite you to anything anymore if Martell's going to be there? She said, yeah, just don't. Moving forward. So then Mel asked about the group text. Kimmy said, you know, historically, she calls me. Yes, Kimmy, but the phone works both ways. And historically, she's always called you. But now history is taking a little detour. Okay, so she's not calling you all the time because clearly you don't want to be bothered you don't ever reach out to her so tisha said yeah but i text you too so then kimmy repeated yet again that historically tisha has called her so tisha said well we weren't in a good place that's why she felt that it was an issue and i agree and kimmy said you know because we weren't i feel like you put it in the text group child we back with the text group <laughs> Child, I thought we had made it out the text group. Oh, child. So Tisha said, that's not true. I just sent out a reminder text. That's it. That's that's the only thing I was doing. Kimmy said, you know, I think it got blown out of proportion because we weren't in the best place. Tisha said, yes, you know, she was just being petty, trying to get an attitude with me about it. Honey, and I got to go with Tisha on this one. Now, I know y'all can't stand Tisha, honey. Don't think about the messenger. Think about the message. Kimmy was being petty. And it was because of whatever they have going on behind the scenes or whatever, because I don't know what it is. I can't keep up. But whatever it was, in that moment, Kimmy was being petty. Kimmy said, it doesn't take much to think that the other one is being petty. And this is what I was thinking. I thought y'all were good after Vegas. I'm confused. The last thing I remember is Kimmy going into the room after Tisha was embarrassed because Marceau didn't want to do the vow renewal of it all. And she said, if you ever need anything, call me. They gave each other a hug. They agreed what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And I thought we were good. So are we not good? Child, I'm confused. Moving forward. So Kimmy starts talking about, you know, we paid for debutante this, we sponsored that, we wrote $1,500 checks here. Tisha said, yeah, you know, we support you too. I mean, we drove all the way to Detroit to watch Jalen pledge. Kimmy said, y'all did, but that doesn't compare to the amount of checks that we wrote. Whole time, Mel sitting there, knowing she done lit the match and threw it in the fire, and now she watching the flames. <laughs> So Tisha is like, we both support each other. So in the confessional, she said, who keeps tabs on who supports each other more? Baby, I would never ask Kimmy and Maurice for another donation. Do y'all hear me? And this is why I say that. I hate when people throw up what they've done for me. That is why I hate asking people for things. This is the very reason why. What was the point of this? To me, that was tacky. For you to sit here and say, well, we've done this, that, and the third, and what have y'all done? You driving to Detroit does not equal the amount of money that we've given to support you all. Like, I didn't like that. I ain't like that at all, honey. Now, I know y'all think Kimmy is all mature and whatnot, but mm, that was tacky. 
Now, if Tisha would have said that, she would have been every stupid this and stupid that, and this, that, and the third, and Kimmy would have been so mature. But child, I digress, honey. That's just my opinion. Maybe that's just me. But that statement, I think you're so uncool. I think you're acting a fool. Shout out to Melody. <laughs> Child, y'all know I gotta do it. So Tisha said, it was only a reminder. Nothing more, nothing less. So Kimmy tried it in this scene, according to me. Honey, that's how I feel. She said, well, I feel like you implied that only Destiny and Mel were sponsoring. She she didn't imply that though, Kimmy. She didn't even say that. She said they were the only two that replied to the text message. That's all she said. So Tisha said, you know, I'm just tired of trying to explain myself. I'm just really tired of it. She said, okay, moving forward, I will make sure that I call and follow up with you because I value you, I look up to you, and I just don't wanna fuss. And I really thought that that was a bright spot for Tisha. Good job, Tisha, honey, on just letting it slide and being the bigger person, because I just feel like it was a big miscommunication. Honey, if you wanna talk on the phone, Kimmy, then you are gonna have to call. Moving forward. In the next scene, Martell is at the work site. He's talking to Fred Acklin about him studying for his test. And he's like, well, you know, my kids, they motivated me one night. Martell, stop roaming the streets, okay? And stop going to these meetings to find a partner when you could be studying for your exam. I'm about to get you all the way together. Let's proceed. So he gets a FaceTime from Mel. And she's like, where you at? I'm about to pull up. He was like, oh, okay. Uh, she's like, I need to talk to you right now. He was like, okay, fine. So then he gets off, he says in his confessional, I know it's because of what I did last night. I'm like, oh Lord, what did he do last night? So Mel gets there, child, and that Bob is bobbing. She gets out and she's like, um, you know, I wanna talk to you about what happened at Bree Street. She said, you know, we need to talk about boundaries and respect because what happened was out of line. So child, apparently, Mel was out dipping and doing, honey, and she was on a date, honey, as she should be. And she told Martell what she was gonna be. Why, I have no idea. Listen, you only drop the location to an ex if you want that ex to show up. That's none of his business. Okay, well he would've said, where are you? I would've said, what is it to you? Like, what do you need? Are the children in danger? Is little Timmy in the well? Oh, okay, everything's all good. Okay, well then I'm out. That's all you need to know, I'm out. So he was having a meeting with some out of town guests that came all the way from LA. He drops the meeting when he finds out that Mel is on a date, left the meeting to come and address her and this guy. And let me just say this, she might not think so, but that's pretty scary to me. I thought that that was scary. I thought that it was stalkerish behavior. I thought that he was a little bit unhinged and that's how you end up on snapped you know i tell y'all all the time honey that is why i am behind this screen because people are loco okay they can't be trusted he said it don't matter she said it does because when you talk about your business reputation and all of this and you're trying to get things on track you can't do that you can't leave meetings so he takes it back to social media and say, you know, you were saying I had a baby all over social media. You did have a baby, bozo. You did. You went outside of your marriage. You thought that it was okay to embarrass her on national TV. So she makes a post in her stories and she's supposed to fall back and get silent so she doesn't embarrass you. Boy, if you don't go to hell respectfully. He was like, I just felt like I should do it in your face. She said, I have not said anything about you on social media as of late. I haven't been bothering you at all. He started causing a scene basically at the restaurant, asking if she was on a date, telling her she gonna be his wife again. He was like, I was not saying it. I was not saying that, uh, that I want you to be my wife. I only told you that I would be with you for the kids. Now, Mel, you know he can't let the side chick of the year think that there is any chance in the world that he would wanna get back with you, okay? Chum, so you know he gonna deny it in true Martell fashion. But the funny thing is, you think it's your choice as to whether or not y'all get back together. That's so cute. Oh, Martell, oh, Hotel Holt. Why do you have so much energy with a brand new baby? That's what I wanna find out, honey. Shouldn't you be emptying out the diaper, Genie? Isn't there something you could be doing? Like warming up the bottles, burping the baby, something. You said you didn't want her. So don't be mad that someone else does. So then he pulls out a phone and he says, this is, this is what you do? You take him to our favorite restaurant? Y'all are no longer married. There is no our favorite restaurant. The fact that you have a video of them out somewhere means that you were lurking in the cut. You took a video. You have someone else's image on your phone without their permission that is a nut job that ain't funny that ain't cute you might want to get a restraining order 
I'm just saying, honey, I know y'all don't want to make it messier than it already is, but that don't make no sense. And I'm sure you've taken plenty of women there during that marriage of yours. You weren't worried about our favorite restaurant then. She was like, I'm not your woman no more. So then he looked at her and kind of short circuited for a minute because he couldn't believe it. <laughs> I was like, Martel, Earth to Martel. Tell old alien head boy, baby, pay him dust. And you might need to, you know, make sure you're protected at all times because child i don't trust martell he can't stand the see mail moving on huh ain't no fun when the rabbits got the gun and that was the end of the episode baby this episode was jam-packed with all kinds of foolishness from the baby crying which really broke my heart please get these babies off of this screen from the babies crying to Mel and Martell arguing once again but the crazy standout part of the episode was this man pulled out his phone and showed her a picture or a video I'm not sure which one it was of her out with someone else now Mel I know you might think this is cute and you might laugh it off and brush it off but he is literally falling apart before our very eyes and ain't nothing cute and ain't nothing funny about it in the case of Tisha and Kimmy who do you think was in the wrong was it tacky of her to talk about the finances and what she's contributed to Tisha and Marceau do y'all think if Marceau and Tisha is broke just say that who do you think started the argument in the middle of the comeback group meeting was it Mel or was it Martell or was it a little bit of both y'all please don't hesitate to like comment and subscribe to my channel and as always stay safe stay blessed spread love not germs peace